Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at some scholars on Penelope in the Odyssey and what they think of her as a character. We're going to start off then with Barbara Graziosi and her take on Penelope as a character. Um, she sees Penelope as quite an interesting feature in the story in that she is um, portrayed as being a kind of danger to Odysseus. Not necessarily that Penelope is actually a danger and I think Graziosi sees this more as the case of dramatic irony being a big part to play. So let's have a quick look at what she says. All the women and monsters Odysseus encounters represent a danger to him. Some are sweet, some are terrifying, but they all impede his return home. For all the dangerous girls, women, goddesses, and monsters Odysseus meets on his way home, it is Penelope herself who constitutes the greatest peril for him. How can Penelope then be the greatest peril for Odysseus? How can she be more dangerous than the other female characters, Circe, Calypso, who uh, threaten Odysseus actually returning home? What does Graziosi mean by this? And I think this is fundamentally the way that women can be viewed in the story. The women are often um, portrayed to deliberately be kind of obstacles to Odysseus's return home. Whenever he runs into a female character, he always has to navigate a tricky, usually social interaction with them. Um, it might be a case of, uh, for example, with Circe, he has to overcome the trickery. He has to avoid the magic, but then he also has to um, sort of realize that his nostos is more important than perhaps that sexual desire, the reason that he stays there for so long. With Calypso, he is challenged by um, the offer of immortality, and he has to choose um, ultimately his desires for nostos over the desire to survive that he may have. And even with Nausicaa, you see he is um, represented with the opportunity for marriage, almost like a, a fresh start, perhaps. And he has to kind of, again, resist that for the more tricky um, ability to reunite Penelope. So with all of them, it's quite clear, really, why there is this sense of um, danger. Why then is Penelope dangerous? Um, what is it that Graziosi sees about her as being uh, the test, the final and greatest test? And really, this is to do with um, the fact that the stakes are so high with Penelope, Odysseus will lose everything. So much of Nostos as a theme is tied around Penelope because she is so central to Odysseus and what he needs to reclaim. If Penelope were to marry a suitor, then Odysseus would potentially lose his oikos. Um, if Penelope were to side with the suitors, he may lose his son, Telemachus. And there's this sense that um, because Penelope is so important in caring for him, she is also therefore crucial in him being able to continue his family. And if Penelope has um, tricked and deceived him, he could therefore lose everything. So that is why Penelope is so important and why Graziosi sees her as being the greatest peril she has the potential to ruin everything for him and he would go back to kind of square one and for a character who places so much emphasis as Odysseus does throughout the books on having a strong secure marriage where you have trust the fact that his trust is placed into question makes it quite perilous for him so that was Graziosi let's take a look now at what Sarah Pomeroy thinks about Penelope and she views Penelope as um, being quite uh, important and actually she counters this idea that Odysseus maybe mistrusts her. So she says, although women suffered disabilities under the patriarchal code, they were not considered inferior or incompetent in the Homeric epic. When Agamemnon and Odysseus sailed to Troy, they had no qualms in leaving their wives to manage their kingdoms in their absence. And Pomeroy goes on to talk about the fact that actually Odysseus clearly has a great deal of trust for Penelope. He is willing to leave her in charge and he is willing to give her, therefore, a great deal of responsibility. Now, this is often overlooked in the Odyssey because we focus so much on the sense that um, when Odysseus and her reunite in Book 23, there is clearly not trust in that moment. Um, both of them are cold towards each other. Odysseus remarks upon this. They don't seem initially to um, have that moment that you're expecting where they immediately are kind of going to fall into each other's arms. And yet that is not necessarily because actually 
she is mistrustful. In a way, it just demonstrates that Odysseus was right to trust her, that she does not immediately do that because she needs to know that he is Odysseus before she acts in that way. And that's why when after the test of the bed, they do reunite, you see that warmth and you see they immediately go from the cool, cold um, sort of introduction to suddenly you have that moment of reunion. This then is something which uh, Pomeroy really emphasizes and which is not necessarily unique, but is definitely unusual about the Odyssey, which is that Penelope is given a lot more weight as a character than in other um ancient Greek stories, particularly from the kind of Homeric um, tradition. Um, she's an equal partner in the marriage. She is not less than Odysseus. He respects her. He trusts her. He gives her importance. Um, it's not to say that she is independent, and Pomeroy is keen to point this out. Penelope could not have everything if she weren't married to Odysseus. She wouldn't have this power without him. But there is this union that is created of trust that is quite special between the two. And so Penelope as a character is very important, trusted, and powerful, according to Pomeroy. And we'll see with the next scholars a little bit more about why that is the case. So Jasper Griffin, let's have a look at what he says. The poet seems to be echoing what Odysseus himself says. There's nothing better than husband and wife living together in harmony. And this therefore links into that idea of Penelope's role as the wife and her importance in essentially Odysseus's goals, his nostos and her centrality to it. And this links in a lot really to what the previous scholars had been saying. Penelope is the center of nostos. She is important to his motivation, goals and journey. Not, however, because of the peril that we saw earlier, but because actually she is um, going to kind of complete Nostos for Odysseus. She is central to that understanding. And we see he as a character often views this as being the case, that he needs this completion. And so when he says this, uh, there's nothing better than husband and wife living together in harmony when he says that, when he's with the Phaeacians. This is what he's referring to. He needs this for his Nostos. If he were to return home and find Penelope had betrayed him, he wouldn't get his proper Nostos because he'd be without that relationship that's so important to the oikos. Finally then, the last scholar that we're going to look at in this video, Catherine Callan King, and this is more about the kind of characterization of Penelope and Odysseus and how they're similar and why that is interesting. So just as in book eight, Odysseus transcended gender by weeping like a woman whose husband had been killed and city destroyed. So Penelope weeps like male sailors whose experience mirrors her husband's. This is, I think, a fascinating feature of um, the writing that Homer produces, or rather the singing that he produces that is written down. Um, the deliberate similarities is so carefully done by the bard. There is nothing here that is accidental. This is a very specific and well done thing that the rhapsodes have um been able to achieve in the characterization. So there's this very famous scene where um, you start off by talking about Odysseus, you leap into this simile where it's comparing it to a sailor, and then it ends by subverting your expectations and talking about Penelope. And what Callan King is doing is then contrasting that with an earlier scene where we see Odysseus weep, and Odysseus weeps all the time. He's not um, reserved, and the Greeks wouldn't really expects their heroes to be reserved. But it's the fact that his emotions are compared to the wife whose husband has been killed and city destroyed, a situation which Penelope potentially believes herself to be in. The characterization then is this fantastic way of developing both characters by making them similar to each other. And you'll see throughout the story, Penelope is cunning, Odysseus is cunning. Penelope is intelligent, Odysseus is intelligent. They are both loyal to one another. They are also both mistrustful, but in a way that actually means that secretly their trust is actually stronger than just surface level. And all of this really helps to tie this sense that these two are really two sides to the same characterization. And Penelope, interestingly, gets this full characterization, therefore, and she is experiencing Nostos when Odysseus returns home. The story is just as much about 
her regaining the full oikos as it is Odysseus. And that really is quite unusual for a female character. Compare it with your study of the Aeneid. I mean, what characterization does Aeneas' two wives get in that story? I mean, one of them dies almost immediately. And the only real characterization we see is that she um, has a strong sense of duty. And then the other doesn't speak. And then you compare that with Penelope, who gets this quite rich characterization. And this then is something that Callan King is really kind of um, picking out. Penelope's experiences aren't diminished. They aren't um, made less important. They're highlighted. They are central to Odysseus and to Nostos. And so therefore, for the role of women in the story, Penelope serves to be an excellent point of their centrality, their importance, just as much as the other women are central and important as an obstacle, a challenge to Odysseus. So there we go, some different scholarly views looking at Penelope. Hopefully that has been helpful for you.